Could this new drug cure obesity? The latest study results are amazing. After decades of research, weight loss drugs might finally be more than just scammy infomercials. Wait a minute. How could a pill cure obesity? Don't people just have to eat healthier and less and maybe move a bit more? It's not so simple. Back in 1994, a molecular geneticist named Jeffrey Friedman discovered that when his lab mice had a particular faulty gene, they just kept on eating until they became obese. That gene encoded for a hormone called leptin, which is normally produced by your fat cells to tell your brain that you're full. I'd like to see you try to stay thin when you eat a full meal, but you still feel starving. Yeah, but how many humans can blame a faulty gene? That was just an example. Since then, we've discovered all sorts of things that can go wrong with your hunger, satiety, nutrient absorption, and much more. Even your gut microbiome can influence weight gain. And it's not just the weight gain side. I bet you've got that one friend that always seems to stay thin no matter how much they eat. Jill. We hate Jill. Exactly. Just like she doesn't stay thin through some act of willpower, that's often not a feasible solution for those who are trying to lose weight. Many people feel this and start searching for an external solution, which has led to a massive industry of fad diets, fat loss supplements, fat burning devices. But the vast majority of these are just snake oil salesmen preying on the desperate. Was Pirelli's miracle elixir. That's what did the trick, sir. True, sir, true. So what, we just say love your body and weight doesn't matter? Not quite. Yes, absolutely love your body. And never look down on someone for weighing more or less. The whole point here is that it's not about blame. Weight the gain is a complicated and shouldn't just be ignored because it really can affect both your health and quality of life. But even there, health standards and beauty standards often don't line up. A 2022 meta-analysis of 35 studies found a J-shaped curve. Your risk of dying from any cause goes up both at the very low body fat percentages and at the high ones. The lowest risk body type for men isn't this, it's this. Same for women, it's not this, it's this. And to widen the disconnect, it really depends on the type of fat. Yes, there are different types. Subcutaneous fat that lives right under the skin, it can make you look a bit puffier, but it can sometimes even lower your risk, especially as you get older. It's the visceral fat that sits between your organs that really causes the health problem. And that's not really so easy to spot with your eyes. Unless you were born on Krypton. Weren't you supposed to be talking about some sort of new discovery? Right, I have a bad habit of getting distracted by cool research. And if you like hearing about cool research to help optimize your life and debunk misinformation, maybe hit that follow button. Now let's talk obesity drugs. Finally. Over the last century, there have been dozens of drugs that were approved to treat obesity, most of which worked by affecting neurotransmitters like serotonin, dopamine, and adrenaline. And in so doing, they affected appetite, helping you eat less, lose weight. Aren't those neuro thingies involved in like a lot of other stuff in your body? Aye, there's the rub. And that's why 25 different obesity drugs have been pulled from the market since 1950. Because of all sorts of side effects affecting the brain and heart and addiction and abuse issues. Here's an example. Back in the 90s, there was a widely prescribed weight loss drug combo called Fenfen. Sounds fun, right? And I'm sure it was at first. It was a pairing of two different drugs that had each been on the market for over 10 years, a sedative appetite suppressant and an amphetamine. And it was prescribed to over 6 million Americans. It spawned what they called Fenfen mills, where doctors would buy up each drug in bulk and then make banks selling it to desperate patients. But most of its popularity was based on a single study of only 121 people with a one year safety follow up. The FDA withdrew Fenfen from the market in 1997 after it turned out that it was causing heart valve issues in hundreds of women. Okay, so no broad messing with brain drugs, but uh, tell me more about the new stuff. How do they work? Excellent question, my dear, whatever your name is. In the 2000s, the FDA started approving a new class of drugs that helped diabetics with their blood sugar. They mimicked a hormone called GLP-1, which helped raise insulin production and lower blood glucose levels. But over time, they noticed that those taking it actually ended up losing weight as well, because of how GLB-1 receptors in the brain and gut also regulate appetite and digestion. How much weight loss are we talking? In 2016, one of these new drugs called liraglutide was shown to help people lose an average of 18 pounds over one year. That was 8% of their total body weight, 5% more than the placebo. That's nice, I guess. Doesn't seem too crazy. I'm getting there. Let's fast forward to June of 2021. The FDA approves a new drug called semoglutide, similar to liraglutide, but it lasts longer in the body, staying active. The clinical trial participants that got the weekly injections ended up losing 15% of their total body weight over the first year before finally plateauing, compared to 2.4% in the placebo group. Tayenu, right? But it doesn't stop there. Enter terzepatide. 
who even comes up with these names? <laughs> I know, right? And the brand names are worse, but stop distracting me. Trizepatide was approved last year by the FDA to treat diabetes, but those who used it ended up dropping a whopping 21% of their body weight, compared to 3% of the placebo group. That's in the same ballpark as bariatric surgery, but without all the knives and blood. Trizepatide targets both GLP-1 and another hormone called GIT, glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide, which also affects insulin production. They also ended up with lowered triglycerides, blood pressure, LDL cholesterol, that's the bad one, elevated HDL cholesterol, and whether or not that was due to just the weight loss or a side effect of the drug itself, that's amazing. And in type 2 diabetics, it lowered HbA1c by 1.6%, and that's when they were already taking metformin, which is the normal diabetic drug. Oh, okay, but what about side effects? Didn't we just talk about jumping to safety conclusions? Some people do experience some GI issues, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, constipation, diarrhea, but only one in 15 found them unpleasant enough that they ended up backing out of the clinical trial. And those weren't damaging in any way. They were the worst at the start, especially when starting with a high dose, which is why slowly ramping up is gonna be key. In the 5,000 clinical trial participants who received the drug, there were also 13 cases of pancreatitis, equivalent to a little over one case per 400 patient years of taking the drug. But drug safety is all about relative risk, comparing your total risk of having problems from any health condition with the drug or without the drug, which is how the FDA evaluates something before putting it onto market, and they've gotten a lot better at doing this in recent years. And the FDA determined that trizepatide's ability to lower all the different health risks associated with elevated weight and diabetes, things like microvascular disease, neurological problems, blindness, kidney failure, a lot more, and just overall quality of life improvement, well, that way outstripped the small risk shown from taking the drug. In some of the early rodent studies, there were some issues with thyroid tumors, but they never found any in the human trials. But if you have a family history of those, definitely talk to your doctor about it. Quick interjection, boop the like button if you're liking this. So where can we get it? I'm glad you asked. Trizepatide was approved last May to treat type 2 diabetes, but not yet for weight loss. The second phase 3 clinical trial will wrap up in April, and the FDA has already fast-tracked the whole approval process, so hopefully it'll be on the market by later this year. In the meantime, you can already get semaglutide for weight loss, and they're both a once-per-week injection that you can do at home, as simple as taking insulin. Okay, but what's the catch in all this? Well, spill it. The list price of Munjaro, the brand name of Terzepatide, is $1,023.04 per fill. Yikes. If you have most types of commercial insurance, combining that with the manufacturer savings card drops the out-of-pocket price to only $25. But the company won't provide it for those on Medicare, Medicaid, and they're still determining the full insurance coverage situation. Drug pricing is insane. Agreed. And we could do a whole long video on that topic alone. But right now, let's focus on the good. When the trisepatide trial results were presented this past November, they received a standing ovation. For good reason. Worldwide obesity rates have tripled since 1975. In 2016, almost a billion adults worldwide were obese. And it's not just adults. In kids and adolescents, less than 1% were obese in 1975. Now that number is 6% for girls and 8% for boys. That's insane. There are many reasons for this. And of course, diet and lifestyle factors are amazingly important. Throw the coke down the drain. The soda. And the other. Yes. And diet and exercise programs should accompany any type of drug-based treatment. But just as modern life has brought so many people down, it's about time it started offering some better solutions. And drugs like trisepatide have the potential to improve millions of lives. I, for one, am excited. And if you want to know more about all the cool ways that science is improving our day-to-day -day life, hit that follow button and let me know in the comments which topic you want to cover next.